Hello. Just a couple of days ago I spontaneously checked the internet to see if anything interesting for a teardown could be found in my region. And as luck would have it, someone living nearby wanted to give away a broken copy machine. I called and said that I would take it sight unseen. Upon arrival however, I realized that the machine was gigantic, requiring three grown men to even lift it off the ground. Since there was no chance to fit it in my car, I had to disassemble the device on the spot. Since I couldn't film openly at that place, I don't have a lot of footage of the actual teardown. Here you can see the unit after I removed the plastic parts covering the metal frame of the copy machine. On its back side you can already see a portion of the valuable electronic and electromechanical components that this machine had to offer. By the way, this is a Konica Minolta DI520 built in Japan around 1998 and back then this would have cost thousands of dollars. All in all it took me around 3 hours to dismantle the device and remove all interesting parts, leaving behind the bare metal skeleton that I could luckily leave at the place since they had a large dumpster for metal scrap. I loaded all the good stuff into my car and drove back to the shop. Upon arrival I started to disassemble the remaining units, cleaned everything and checked the data sheets of the parts that I salvaged. In this video I will now show you how at least this particular copy machine is like a proverbial Eldorado for electronic salvages. This is a large assortment of plastic gears, pulleys, tooth belts, axles and retaining rings, which could be reused for all kinds of mechanical applications. Here we have the massive hinge that connected the document feeder to the enclosure of the copy machine. I think it could still be good for some piece of functional furniture of some kind. Next you see only a small portion of all the axles that can be retrieved from a large copy machine like this. Since most of them have nearly ideal cylindrical shapes, they can be reused for a variety of metalworking projects. These black rubber rollers, by the way, can be removed with a sharp knife. I also have salvaged a number of really rugged ball bearing rails. These again have a very unspecific geometrical form, making them universally useful for furniture projects like drawers or even for equipment cabinets. And last but not least we have this drum which once acted as one of the key components of the copy machine. It basically is a coated metal cylinder that is suspended on ball bearings on both sides. Ok, after we have seen some interesting mechanical parts, let us take a look at these optical components I found inside the machine. What we have here is the scanner unit of the machine. This is a lens system that is held together by a black plastic enclosure. Sitting behind it was this so called charged coupled device, often just called CCD chip. This Sony branded component is realized in a weird 22 pin dual inline package. Also belonging to the scanner are these mirror glasses. This black box is the laser unit of the copy machine. After having removed its plastic cover, we can see a range of optical components that are mounted on a heavy base plate that seems to be made from zinc die cast. And after removing some screws we can take a look at the actual laser diodes. These diodes typically operate in the infrared part of the electromagnetic spectrum. This means that the laser beam is invisible to the human eye. But contrary to what one might think intuitively, they are just as harmful for your eyes as visible laser beams. In fact, the invisibility of the laser light makes them even more dangerous, because you might not even realize that you are exposed to it. So to make it short, I do not recommend to play around with these. Leaving mechanical and optical components behind, we can now take a closer look at the electronic parts that can potentially be salvaged from a machine like this. What you see here are, for the most part, highly specialized digital control and signal processing circuits that had a very specific application outdated microcontrollers and other digital devices in these kinds of service mount packages are typically both hard to remove and unlikely to be of any use in your future projects. However, this PCB carries various large connectors with gold plated contacts, which gives it a certain scrap metal value. I recommend to stockpile boards of this kind and sell them on eBay once you have amassed a certain number of them. Sometimes you can also find RAM modules that might also be still worth something. 
Some other boards, however, carry both easily salvageable and highly reusable parts. These large black boxes are expensive hybrid devices that were used as motor drivers and other power electronics purposes inside the copy machine. We will take a closer look at both these devices and the motors in just a minute. Furthermore, a large number of quality relays can be salvaged from this device. Then we also find a small flyback converter as well as a conventional auxiliary power supply. This board is the high voltage inverter for the cold cathode fluorescent lamp of the scanner unit. The inverter could potentially be reused as a general purpose high voltage power supply. We also have a large number of ferrite beads as well as this chunky relay. In addition, the front panel also holds a comparatively large LCD including backlight. I now started to actually salvage those parts from the PCBs, which I thought would be useful for me in the future. It took me around half an hour to desolder the parts you see here. What we have here are power electronics components for several purposes. Relays, stepper motor drivers, brushed DC motor drivers, full bridges, power op amps, voltage regulators and so on. I looked up the price for these devices online. If you were to buy this stuff as new parts in small numbers, you would have to pay between 160 and 200 euros for it. All of these are things that I really need for some of my future projects. Before we take a look at the motors, there is also this gigantic power supply unit. It consists of at least three separate high power switched mode power supplies with a common filter and active power factor correction unit. It will take me some time to figure out which voltages can be obtained at which maximum current. But this could potentially be a good base for a very capable lab power supply. And now here we have the electromechanical components that I could retrieve from the old copy machine. These are normal brushed DC motors, but they are more useful than what you can salvage from other kinds of devices because they have warm drives and additional reduction gears that will enable you to obtain the high torque that gearless DC motors cannot deliver. They also have these photo interrupter units that would allow you to read out the actual frequency of revolution drive the motors at constant RPMs and so forth. Next, we have a group of cylindrical electromagnets that could be used as electromechanical actuators for all kinds of applications. They have tapped screw holes and can easily be mounted to other metal surfaces. Next, and that is pretty awesome, we have an assortment of brushless DC motors, including the driver circuits. Some of them even have a gearbox, which is even better. It would be really hard to even buy something like this. These are not off-the-shelf parts and they would also have been quite expensive. And last, but in my opinion most awesome, are these stepper motors. Especially in conjunction with the stepper motor drivers I have already salvaged, this is a find that is actually worth several hundred euros. They are made by Sanyo Denki in Japan. I was even able to find technical data for these motors. I also checked the prices if you would buy new motors of this type and quality. And they are between around 50 and 100 euros each. And at the moment I have put the other things from the copy machine aside and I am right now playing around with the stepper motors and their driver circuits. Should I find an easy way to reuse them? Then you will hear from that again. So guys, I hope you liked this little video and I guess that many of you will now keep their eyes open to get their hands on an old copy machine themselves. At least in my opinion, this is one of the best salvages I ever made. And I guess it's really worth it on so many levels.